This module is about risk and opportunity. When you execute your project, you have the project results in the back of your mind. As a project manager, normally you talk about the so-called project risks. And these are risks that could jeopardize the delivery of the project result. When you discuss these risks with your project sponsor, you need to realize that the project sponsor is thinking about company risks. For him it's a risk when the project results contributes insufficiently to the organization's goal. A lot of the misunderstandings between project managers and project sponsors is exactly on this frame of mind. So whenever you discuss something with your project sponsor, always try to translate the project risk to the company risks. This will help your uh, project sponsor enormously in making the right decisions for your project. Now what do we mean when we talk about a risk or when we talk about an opportunity? A risk is an event for which it is uncertain whether this will occur and the negative consequences for the project if it should occur. Now an opportunity is the same as a risk but then we are talking about positive consequences. Now look at the uh, unders underscores. It is an event, an uncertain event and it is something with negative consequences. We often talk about the impact of the project. These two together form what we call a risk and when it's something positive they form together an opportunity. We can calculate this and we can calculate the so-called expected risk value and this is the probability times the impact, the money, the, the financial impact of the consequence. This figure will help you to uh, prioritize the risks and to put them in an order of sequence. And so when the expected risk value is the highest, these are the risks you have to pay a lot of attention to. In risk management, but also in opportunity management, there are five steps. The first step is identifying. The second step is analyzing. Then we plan responses. Now these three are done at the start of a project. Then we've got our go decision. So we start executing the project and we start delivering the work packages then the risk management activities are monitoring and signaling and if we see new risk we identify again, we analyze, we plan responses and so on. A very nice technique for identifying risk is the risk breakdown structure. This is a decomposition of the main areas in which we can have uh, risks in the project. For example, we can have a risk in the result area, in the environment of the project, in the organization, the way we organize the project and the way we manage or control the project. When we break down these four categories of risks, we get a number of subcategories of risk that could go wrong. When you start a project, when you don't have yet a very well detailed work breakdown structure, you need to use a risk breakdown structure in order to, to make a top-down identification of the risks that you foresee in the project or of course the opportunities. And then you ask what can go wrong about the specification of requirements or what can go wrong in the technology. And so you go from top to bottom and this will result in a huge list with many, many, many risks. Uh, too many risks to manage. So therefore we need to uh, prioritize these lists of risk. And this is the next step in which we're going to do that.
this huge list with risk we write down in a so-called risk register. This can be a word table or an, a spreadsheet. Uh, spreadsheet preferable because we can easily uh, do the calculations then and we can sort and select in it. Now the first thing we are going to do is to do a qualitative analysis. So this is a quick analysis in which we are going to look which opportunity and threats, which risk are we going to accept. So what I mean with that is what risks and opportunities we are going to leave and we are not going to pay any extra attention to that. We look at a high probability, we look at high impact, and these two criteria form like a, a function like a funnel. And from this huge list of risk, we have a more, uh, a more dense list with um, risk that really need to, be, uh, need to be analyzed more thoroughly. And this more thorough analysis is the quantitative analysis. You see the difference, qualitative is it in high, medium, low terminology and quantitative analysis is really with real figures, with real uh, probability percentage. And these are the opportunities and threats that we are going to investigate further. A very nice um, a tool that you can use to represent the risk profile on your project is the so-called um, impact probability matrix. We have uh, two uh, sections. We got a section for the risk and we got a section for the opportunities. Now all the risk that uh, we have identified in the previous step, we plot them against the two dimensions they have because the probability of the probability dimension and of the impact dimension. Here I have given you some examples, three in the risk and we've got uh, three of two opportunities also. This, um, uh, this fat line gives us the boundary within which we are going to investigate uh, further the risk in which we're going to put through the quantitative analysis and we are going to look at uh, risk 1 and 2 and risk A. This is the circle around it. The fat line we call, the, so we call this the risk horizon. Everything that is below the risk horizon we just accept it. Everything that is above the risk horizon we are going to investigate during the quantitative analysis. Here I have written down a, an example of a quantitative analysis. We have five risks, risk one, two, three, four and five. And for each of them we have analyzed and we come to the conclusion that the probability is 90, 50, 10 or 30 and 10 percent. We also investigated the impact that it would have when this specific risk would occur. And then we calculate the expected risk value or the expected monetary value. And this is the probability times the impact. So here you see for the whole project 9,000 to 500, 10,750 and to 500. Adding up to a total of 24,750. And, and now let's assume that there would be an insurance company um, that has a, a service that we could uh, insure this project, then it probably would cost somewhere be, uh, amongst the 24750 if we would do nothing, eh? if we won't take any measures. You can calculate this by using this mathematical formula. So for those of you that have still got some memory of their math lessons, we, you can examine this, this one. But in fact, the only thing it tells us is just uh, multiply the probability times the impact and add the expected monetary values of all the risk that are, are on your project. And this is the, the insurance premium you need to pay. If you could find a company by which, uh, by which you could, 
could uh, get an insurance like this. When you have done this quantitative analysis, you need to think about uh, what you could do to prevent certain risks. Let's say this first risk has to do with an event that we will get our permit too late and the impact would be that I need to put in a lot of overtime to, to make this up. As a project manager with my team, we need to think about what we could do to prevent this from happening. When you would look at all the responses to reward risks, we can come up with six main categories. So we have the risk measures, the responses that has to do with avoiding the risk. In this, you try to develop certain activities so that it is impossible to, um, that this risk would really occur. So in fact, you, you diminish the probability of happening uh, to zero. When that's not possible, you can think about to mitigate, so you ensure that the consequences, the impact, or the probability, or both of them are reduced. So mitigate has always to do trying to, to get a lower probability from, for the event that would happen. Or you can have uh, to take some precautions that the consequences of the risk, the impact of the, the event is lower. Then we have a sharing, so we can share it with another party. Let's say you have a joint venture and you are doing a building project, then you share the, ris the, the risks with all your suppliers of, say, bad weather or other kind of things which you cannot really influence. Then there is the category of transference or insurance. Now, insurance and transferring is a little bit the same, only the difference is that uh, we talk about insure when we really have a company that has its core business to, uh, to sell insurance. But in this type of risk responses, we try to ensure that the other party bears the consequences. For an insurer, this is uh, logical. But when you would have, for example, a firm fixed price project, the price risks is transferred to the supplier. Then we can draw up a disaster plan so that we are ready in the event that something is happening. In fact, we, we are accepting the risk as if, but we think about what we are going to do when the risk really occurs so that we don't have to, to invent or to develop a recovery plan when it really happens because it's already, it's already developed at the start of the project. Finally, we could, do, we could do nothing, but would we take a conscious decision that we accept a specific risk. This is the category of acceptance. And if we are going to do this with all these risks that came out of the quantitative analysis, then it's, it's, it's impossible to get a zero risk. So we always have a so-called residual risk on the project after that we have developed and implemented all our risk responses. The same can be done with uh, opportunities. So we have three main groups. First we have use the opportunity. There we're going to try to increase the probability that the fortunate um, event actually will happen. If we would share the opportunity with other parties, we can persuade them to um, perform favorable actions that, that would help us to share this, uh, this opportunity. Let's say you could have a kind of bonus system for a kind of incentive system for suppliers. And if this incentive system is there for supplies, so you can, for example, share uh, savings, it would stimulate the supplier to do the work more efficient. And of course, the same like accepting, we could omit the opportunity and there we leave it as it is. 
what you need to realize as a project manager, you don't. Uh, it's not enough only to manage risks, but you all you need to manage also need to manage opportunities. The opportunities are be are behaving the, um, in in probability uh, terms of speaking in the same way as risk. Only the impact is different from the from the negative to the positive. Some project managers, they are really funny. They, they have a kind of phony response. For example, I keep a finger on the pulse, discuss with somebody. Um, you really need to put in, in the uh, risk responses, really tangible activities. Really, you need to develop good strategies and, and not only have a vague description that you should look at it. No, you really need to to have very well-defined risk responses that would really make a difference. You need to realize that the risk profile is never static. It's a dynamic process. During the whole project, as long as the uh, risk have not yet manifested themselves, it's a very dynamic a change of probabilities, a change because you've got new insights. So this whole risk register, you need to update every control cycle. Now when a risk occurs, it's not yet not any longer a risk, but it has become an issue. It has become something that you have to take action on it immediately. During the implementation, during the, the real stages in which you are executing the project, you need to have a very uh, sensitive view on what is happening so that you can determine the change in risk profile at at earliest as possible. And you can do that by looking at what's happening in the environment, listening to the gossip in the corridors, reading the news media, listening to what your people, your team members are telling you, look at mistakes that are made and look at the metrics. And based upon that, try to get a feeling what possibly could go wrong and what, what has changed from the moment that you have made your first schedule and, and how this schedule is impacted upon the things that are happening and upon the new information that you get during the project execution.